Hey friends, my name is Yi and you're watching Yi Mr. Easy. Welcome to a new video for IGCSE at Max. Today, we have rules and examples for rates of change. And we'll start off with some basics, but before we get into it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. So now we have some basics. So we have an equation for the rate of change, which is always d over dt, like always d something over dt. Like for example, dv over dt, like v stands for volume. To say it verbally, it will be the rate of change of volume with respect to time. So whatever d is something over dt is the rate of change of that thing with respect to time. So one thing to note is that if the rate of change is positive, then the item is increasing, like the by that thing, by the rate of change of that thing is increasing. But if the rate of change is negative, it is decreasing. So this really one nice thing to note is that if dt over ds equals u, you can actually reciprocal both sides to become dx over dt equals 1 over u. Then we have some basis for the chain rule. So we have the chain rule for the rate of change. So let's say if we have dv or dy over dt, it's basically equal to dy over dx times by dx over dt, because you can cancel these two out to remain with dy over dt. So here we have an extended rate of change, which is basically with three different variables, like three different things. So that dy over dt could be dy over dx times dx over du times du over dt. Then you cancel out, cancel out like a telescope in series. So here we have small changes. So we have this symbol right here, which stands for delta. It's a Greek letter, delta. So here's a smaller case, and here's a big, big, like, big letter, big, like um, capital letter, but we use a smaller, smaller like, capital. So delta right here. Delta is equal to the small change. And so delta x right here will be the small change in x. So here's how you will like formulate your like um your response. So you will first write that delta the change in y over the change in x is roughly equal to dy over dx. Then you can go on to say delta y over delta x equals dy over dx and just solve for whatever that you want. So once you have in this form right here, you have two choices. Either d, uh, delta y equals dy over dx times by delta x by just timesing everything, or you could reciprocal everything, reciprocal, to get delta x equals delta y times by dx over dy. So notice the difference right here, dy and dx, like so. So here we have an example. So the radius r in cm of a circle changes with time t in seconds, and they are related by the equation of r equals t squared plus 2. Find the rate of change of r during the interval t equals 2, and t equals uh, 2.1. So the, the rate of change of the radius, the, uh, delta r over delta t, the change in radius of the change in like, the r will be, we have this equation, so when t equals 2.1 minus when t equals 2. So it will be 2.1 squared plus 2 minus 2 squared plus 2 all over the change in time, 2.1 minus 2, which as us, 0.41 over 0.1 they're both in the, the r is in cm per second like this and therefore you divide both uh, you divide the um, the fraction by 0.1 which gives us 4.1 cm per second right so so that's an easy example and now we'll look into percentage change so we have these two notes right here if x changes from x to x plus delta x, then the percentage the percentage change in x is equal to delta x over x times 100, or like 100%. Therefore, the same thing happens to y. The percentage change in y will be equal to delta y over y times 100%, and it will be like a percent. So basically this right here, is basically from, if let's say this is x, it will be changed to delta x, so this will be delta x because we know that if this is the end point minus the starting point, this will be delta x. And now we'll look at some examples. So the question just now, the radius r cm of a cycle changes with time blah 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 when they're related by the equation r equals t squared plus 2. 
and from just now we saw that it's 4.1 cm per second. So for question A, it will be 4.1 cm per second. Number 2, find the rate of change of R during the interval from T to T times uh, T plus delta T. So we know that from the, from the question, delta R will be equal to the second half of the interval, T plus delta T squared plus 2 minus T squared plus 2. And if we expand all the bracket out and like times t times uh, t plus delta t like squared plus two minus t squared minus two, you will get two t delta t minus sorry plus delta t squared. And therefore, the rate of change for t, uh, for r will be equal to the delta r will be right here, this right here. So two t delta t plus delta t, oops, t plus delta t squared over the time interval. So the time interval will basically, will like basically be delta t because we're changing from t to t plus delta t and t plus delta t minus t will be equal to delta t. So we can basically just simplify this um, this equation right here and I'll just write it on top. So, and if we were to simplify it, you can um, like divide both sides, uh, uh, top and bottom, by delta t, delta t, delta t. So therefore, delta r over delta t will be equal to t, uh, two t plus delta t, and it's in change in radius of the change, the rate of change of r, which is cm. So it'll be two t plus delta t cm per second. Like so, and number c, c. Hence, uh, find the rate of change of r at the instant where t equals 2. So we have r equals t squared plus 2. And therefore, dr over dt, we differentiate r with respect to t, will be equal to 2t. And when t equals 2, it will be equal to 4. That means that the rate of change of r with respect, with, with respect to t at the instant where t equals 2 will be 4 cm per second. So 4 cm per second. So the point of this right here is to show that in the rate of change question, you don't necessarily have to use delta r in every single part. Because sometimes it asks the rate of change of something, which is basically just the something over the t. So it doesn't involve any delta. Then we have question 2. The radius of the circle increases at a rate of 3 cm per second. Find the rate of change of uh, find the rate of change of the area when the radius is 5 cm. So we can deduce some um, information from the question first. So the radius of a circle is increasing at a rate of 3 cm per second. So the rate of uh, the rate of change of the radius dr over dt will be equal to 3. And we're aiming to find the rate of change of the area. So we have to find dA over dt. So how do you find dA over dt when you're given dr over dt? You will use the chain rule. So it will be dA over dr times by dr over dt. We, and we already have this, so we have to find this right here. So this basically means uh, like, di like differentiating A with respect to R. So we have to find an equation that links area and radius and we have the area of um, a circle. So basically it's a equals pi r squared. Differentiating it, we'll get dA over dr equals 2 pi r. And we have to find the increase in of area when the radius is 5 cm. So radius is 5 cm will be equal to 10 pi cm squared per second. So, so therefore we have some information dA over dt equals dA times by dr times by dr over dt so it's just dA over dr so so we know that dA over dr from here is 10 pi so 10 pi times by dr over dt is given in the question 3 like so so it will be 10 pi times 3 which is just 30 pi and the unit is the change in the area so cm oops, cm squared per second like so. And here we have a last question. 
So given that y equals 3x squared minus 2x minus 3 and that when x equals 2, there's a small increase in x of p percent, use, cal uh, use calculus to determine the approximate percentage, percentage change in y. So it looks like a complicated question, so I'll just break it down. So let's just find the corresponding value for x uh, for y first. So when x equals 2, y will be basically 3 times 2 squared minus 2 uh, times 2 minus 3, like so right here. And that will get you y equals 5. So let's just differentiate y with, with respect to x first. So dy over dx will be equal to 6x minus 2. And when x is 2, and so it will be 6 times 2, 12. 12 minus 2 will be 10. So it will be 10 first, like so. So let's just uh, put it aside first. So let's just look at the the change in x. So delta x, right? Like so we know that there's a small increase in x of p percent. So the change in x will be p percent times by x right here, which is just p over 100 because p percent is basically p over 100 times by x. And we know that x can be written as x equals 2 because at that instant, that x is equal to 2. So when x equals 2, the delta x will be 2p over 100. And I will simplify first. So just leave it here, 2p over 100. And we know that delta, delta y is uh, over delta x is probably equal to dy over dx. And to find delta y, you just times both sides by delta x. So delta y equals delta x times dy over dx, like so. And delta x is just from just now, 2p over 100 times by dy over dx, what we found just now from here. So times by 10. So just let's just simplify this. So it'll be this and times by this. So it'll be 2p over 10 or 0.2p. Like so. So we have delta y equals 2p. So we're not done yet, but we're almost done. To find the percentage change in um, the, percentage, the percentage change in y, there's a formula from just now, remember? This right here. The percentage change in, the percentage change in y will be equal to delta y over y times 100. So delta y over y times 100. Delta y is from here. 0.2p and y from the third from the question is 5 5 times 100 this will be equal to 20p over 5 this is a percent already and 20 divided by 5 will be 4 so it will be 4p percent and that's the final answer and that's it for this short video for rules and examples for rates of change and i hope you'll find it useful and helpful and if you did Please leave a like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so you never miss any future videos. And if you have any comments or constructive feedback about my channel or my YouTube or my website, you can drop them off in the comment section and I reply to them. Or you can email me when my, when my email is in my YouTube bio. And check out my social media in the description for example LinkedIn or YouTube or Instagram. And if you need any learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description. Or you can type it out in your browser at www.emacyeasy.com And I hope you'll find it useful and helpful and I'll see you all in the next video which will be questions for the rates of change. But until then, stay safe and happy learning.